The story starts with the main character, Yuta Asamura, having a busy day at work. When he gets home, his father, Taichi Zamura, tells him that he's getting married again. He explains that the woman he's marrying worked at a place his boss dragged him to, and she took care of him when he was drunk. Yuta asks if his father is sure she's not deceiving him, to which his father responds that she isn't like that. He also mentions that Yuta will meet her tonight after work when everyone gets together. Later, Yuta tells his father that although this news is sudden, he is calm and believes that as long as his father is happy, that's what matters. However, his father tells him that things will change because now he will have a little sister, the daughter of his father's new wife. That evening, they all gather, and Yuta finally meets the woman his father is marrying, Akiko Ez. She apologizes for the timing, knowing Yuta is busy with work, but he reassures her not to worry. Akiko then introduces her daughter, Saki Ayase. Yuta realizes Saki is his age, she's 17 and a second-year high school student. Akiko apologizes for the confusion, explaining that Saki doesn't like having her photos taken because she always thinks she looks bad in them. Yuta and Saki later talk alone at the drinks area. Saki expresses relief about living together and says she was worried Yuta might be a bad person. Yuta jokes that you can't always tell who the bad people are because they often hide behind a good mask. Saki mentions she heard that Yuta works hard to pay for college and gets good grades, but Yuta points out that even smart people can be criminals. Saki laughs and then tells Yuta that she has something to say before their parents come out. She wants to tell him something privately, indicating that she trusts him. Saki shares that she feels Yuta lacks passion for anything, which is why she thinks he will understand her message. She tells him not to expect anything from her, just as she doesn't expect anything from him. Yuta feels relieved by this and says he can finally breathe easily, which surprises Saki but makes her agree as she feels the same way. On Sunday, June 7, Taichi is busy cleaning the house because Akiko and Saki are moving in soon. Taichi tells Yuta that he's nervous because he left cleaning his room for last and is now freaking out. He worries that if Akiko says his room smells bad, he'll get depressed. A few minutes later, the doorbell rings, and Yuta welcomes Akiko and Saki. Akiko mentions she bought some things to avoid coming empty-handed. Saki asks Yuta to ignore her mother because she can't say no and bought everything that was recommended to her. As they walk down the hall, both women comment on how nice it smells, and Akiko says it's just as Tai Chi described, he loves cleanliness. Yuta tells them that a clean space is important for a healthy spirit, and their motto is eliminate every speck of dust. Saki thinks the motto was a bit intense. Meanwhile, Tai Chi gathers enough courage to make a dramatic entrance, welcoming them to their new home while spraying air freshener. After a few seconds of silence, Akiko and Saki start laughing, and Yuta feels a bit embarrassed. Yuta then takes Saki to her room, explaining that although they have a bed and curtains, they weren't sure about her color preferences, so she can change them. The desk is by the window, and she can move it if she wants. Saki thanks him, saying the room is big, though Yuta thinks it's normal. Saki shares that they used to live in a small apartment, only 10 square meters, and she didn't have her own room. Yuta assumes they slept together on futons, but Saki explains that her mother works nights, so they have opposite schedules, and she slept alone. Saki then asks Yuta why he seems so tense when talking to her. Yuta replies that he doesn't know what to say. Saki reminds him that they are the same age, so he can relax. However, Yuta explains that he acts this way precisely because they are the same age. Saki asks if he feels tense around his classmates or friends, but Yuta says it's not the same. Saki assures him she's not criticizing him and that he doesn't need to worry about her. Yuta replies that it's not the problem, deciding it's best to ask her directly. Taking a deep breath, Yuta asks Saki if she would prefer he treat her like his friends. She says yes, adding that she would feel more comfortable that way because she's not his superior and doesn't deserve any special respect. Yuta is relieved by her answer and agrees to relax, though he admits he's not sure he can treat her exactly like his friends. He explains that he's trying to set clear boundaries, which will make things easier. Saki laughs a little, saying she appreciates his honesty and is glad they can adjust as needed. She mentions that when she says something similar at school, people laugh and think it sounds like a contract, which is why she distanced herself from everyone except one friend. She doesn't want to waste time flattering people who don't put in the effort to communicate honestly. Changing the subject, Yuta asks if she wants help organizing her things. She tells him he's a good person. As they all start arranging the house, Yuta finds an old cabinet with animal stickers at a low height, making him think it was decorated by a small child, which he finds endearing. At one point, Saki asks Yuta to come closer, but he trips and falls. The noise brings Akiko and Taichi to their room to check on them. When Yuta gets up, he realizes he's holding a bra, 
which he quickly throws away in embarrassment, making everyone laugh. Later, while unpacking, Yuta notices that Saki goes to Cisei High School. She confirms this and asks if he's surprised because she doesn't seem like a serious student. Yuta says he's actually surprised because he also attends Cisei and apologizes for not mentioning it sooner. Saki tells him there's no need to apologize. Yuta also mentions that at school, he might pretend they don't know each other, but Saki says she doesn't mind and understands it might be easier for him. Before Yuta can ask more about it, his phone starts ringing. Saki tells him to answer it, saying she doesn't mind if people take calls in front of her. Yuta thanks her and goes to the bathroom to take the call. Yuta gets a call asking him to come into work. Later, he arrives at the bookstore where he works and, while at the cash register with his co-worker Shirori Yomiri, she comments that he smells like a girl. She asks if he has a girlfriend, but Yuta tells her not to be silly, unsure if he really smells that much. Shirori confirms that he does, joking that he must have been very close to someone to smell so sweet. Yuta tries to leave, but she stops him, asking him to stay. Shirori then changes the subject, remembering that Yuta mentioned he was getting a new sister. She asks if he has met her and if she is pretty. Yuta replies that she is, which makes Shirori tease him further, urging him to enjoy his youth and suggesting that something could happen between them. Yuta, having attended all boys' schools, insists he doesn't have time for impure thoughts and finds it complicated, admitting he doesn't know how to act around siblings. Shirori advises him to just be himself, which Yuta ponders. That night, Yuta walks home, takes off his shoes, and quietly heads to his room. He notices Saki in the living room and tells her he's home, as it's polite to announce one's return. Saki, not used to having anyone to greet at home, apologizes, explaining that she doesn't know how to respond. Yuta just nods, prompting Saki to comment on his sudden seriousness. She reassures him that she wasn't treated badly, her mother would arrive home while she was at school, do what she needed, and leave before Saki returned. That was their routine. Yuta remarks that it sounds like they get along well, which Saki agrees with, saying she enjoyed their recent shopping trip together. Yuta then asks if Saki has taken a bath yet. When she says no, he offers to let her go first. While bathing, Yuta gets lost in thought, his expression showing a hint of melancholy. Meanwhile, Saki listens to the smart bathroom system's settings from the living room. After Yuta finishes and dresses, he informs Saki that the bathroom is free, still speaking a bit tensely. He wishes her good night, and she thanks him, wishing him the same. Yuta turns on the bathroom light to make it ready for her. Saki goes to take a bath, and afterward, while getting ready for bed, she realizes she left the bathroom light on. She tries to turn it off but accidentally turns on the hallway light, struggling with the unfamiliar smart panel. After several attempts, she finally turns off the light and goes to sleep. On the morning of June 8, Yuta wakes up slowly thanks to his alarm clock. As he leaves his room, he greets Saki and asks if she slept well, knowing she's the only one home so early. She thanks him for preparing the bath, saying it was perfect, but asks him not to do it again to avoid wasting water. Yuta agrees and heads off to school. At school, Yuta spots Saki alone and approaches his friend Maru. Maru advises him to forget about Saki, noting that it's best not to interfere in someone else's love life. He hints at rumors about Saki, suggesting she's involved in questionable activities. Yuta is surprised, as Maru doesn't usually believe such gossip. Maru mentions that Saki's appearance, blonde hair, piercings, and a stern expression makes her look like a gang member. Some even claim to have seen her leaving a motel. A baseball club member asked her out, and she allegedly confirmed the rumors, saying she doesn't want to date anyone. Yuta is skeptical but acknowledges the rumor's impact. Maru shifts the conversation, teasing Yuta about having a new little sister. Later, Yuta heads to the tennis club, noticing a girl enjoying her free time. He then sees Saki, who's isolated from the others. Surprised, he asks her if she's skipping classes. She removes her earphones, wondering why he's talking to her. Yuta explains that he was concerned about her missing classes, to which she responds playfully, likening him to a scolding older brother. Yuta clarifies that he's not trying to reprimand her but was unaware she had chosen tennis. Saki explains that her friend Maya Narasaka is just playing around on the field. Maya had suggested they choose the same sport, which is why Saki is there. Curious, Saki asks Yuta why he chose tennis. Yuta admits that he picked tennis because it doesn't involve team games, he dislikes depending on others or having others depend on him. Saki nods, sharing a similar sentiment, she chose tennis to avoid team sports and keep her distance from others. Yuta realizes this might be because she struggles to fit in with her class, which surprises him since he always thought fashionable girls like her were the center of attention. She tells him she doesn't mind, if people leave her alone, she has more time for herself. 
Later, Yuta returns home and is greeted by Akiko, who is preparing to go out. She tells him she has made dinner, and Yuta apologizes for any inconvenience, understanding that dealing with customers can be exhausting. Akiko clarifies that she is actually a bartender, which surprises Yuta. She checks her watch, says she has to go, and asks Yuta to take care of the house while she's gone. Yuta agrees and then goes to his room to study. When he hears the door, he realizes Saki has arrived and welcomes her in. Seeing him studying, she turns on the light and remarks that it's impressive he balances studying and working. She then asks if he knows of any well-paying part-time jobs, as she needs money but doesn't want to overwork herself. She hopes to find something that pays around 10,000 yen for a few hours of work. Yuta doubts any normal job would pay that well and expresses his skepticism. Saki mentions she might have to continue with her sales, which Yuta misunderstands, thinking she means selling herself. He subtly advises her to take better care of her body. Saki responds that she takes good care of herself and wants to earn a lot of money for that very reason. Yuta then asks if she would say that in front of her mother, and Saki confidently replies that she would, believing her mother would be proud of her maturity. She asks if Yuta didn't feel the same pressure to grow up quickly and assumes he must have impressed his father from a young age. This confuses Yuta further, and he recalls that Saki mentioned a job the day before, leading him to realize there was a misunderstanding. He sincerely apologizes to her for the mistake. Saki asks Yuta not to worry about his misunderstanding, admitting she understands why people might get the wrong idea about her based on her appearance. She explains that her clothes are like armor, helping her survive in society because life is a constant struggle, even if others can't see it. She then asks if he's noticed how cute her mother looks when she goes to work. Yuta admits that he has, and Saki reveals that her mother only finished high school. Despite her limited education, she is often judged harshly because she is an attractive woman working nights, with many assuming she's using her looks to her advantage. Yuta thinks this is unfair, and Saki agrees, explaining that society often uses twisted logic to judge people. If someone is smart but not attractive, they are considered a nerd, if they are attractive but not smart, they are accused of using their looks to exploit others. A woman who doesn't depend on anyone is seen as a parasite, but if she works hard, she's criticized for not having a good man to help her. Saki explains that she uses her clothing as armor because she needs to be perfect to stand out, excel in her studies, and work hard. Yuta asks if she finds this exhausting, and she admits that it is, but believes it will be worth it to prove people wrong. Yuta reflects on his own desire for independence and freedom from others' expectations. He realizes that Saki seeks to be strong and independent for similar reasons. Saki agrees and apologizes for any misunderstandings. After a few moments, Yuta compliments her on the delicious food and asks if she knows of any part-time jobs. She appreciates his concern but insists she doesn't want him to solve all her problems. Yuta proposes a deal, she makes him miso soup every day, and he helps her find a job. Saki asks if this is his way of declaring his feelings, but Yuta clarifies that it's not. He just enjoyed having homemade soup for the first time in years and knows Akiko is busy with her job. Saki agrees to the arrangement, and Yuta promises to help her find a job so she can be independent. Saki agrees to cook for him from now on, marking the beginning of a supportive partnership. The next day, Yuta woke up, still in disbelief about what he saw from Saki. When Yuta goes to the kitchen, he sees Saki preparing breakfast and asks her what she's doing. She reminds him of their deal from yesterday. Yuta, already aware of the agreement, points out that it was supposed to be for dinner. Saki explains that she decided to make breakfast as well, as part of her personal policy to always give more than expected. Yuta, impressed, rushes to finish his breakfast and head to work, complimenting her on the delicious meal. While watching Yuta eat, Saki asks if he doesn't like the food. Yuta, caught off guard, clarifies that it's not that he dislikes it but that he usually eats his fried eggs with soy sauce. Saki is surprised by this, as they always make it with salt and pepper at home. She decides to remember this preference for the future. At work, Yuta is reading a book about money, which catches his co-worker Shiori's attention. She asks him about it, and he explains that he wants to live independently after finishing high school, so he needs to save money. He also mentions that having a younger sister at home makes the house a bit crowded. Shirori understands his desire for independence but thinks having a sister his age could be helpful. She comments that it's not bad to rely on others when needed, noting that some people prefer women to be dependent, though she considers that a matter of personal taste. Shirori agrees with Yuta about the importance of money but also mentions that it's okay to depend on others sometimes. She brings up that even millionaires rely on others, which Yuta finds a bit shady. Shirori then playfully asks if it would be odd for a beauty like her to have a couple of sugar daddies, making Yuta nervous as she approaches him. When Yuta moved away from Shirori in surprise, she clarified that she was joking and began to laugh. She advised him to consider relying a little more on his family. When Yuta returned home, 
he shared this advice with Saki and discussed the best ways to depend on others. He continued to look for options but thought this advice could be helpful. Saki was surprised to learn that Yuta had such close friends and offered her full support, even if Yuta didn't understand what she meant by that. Saki remarked that she sees herself as a kind, older sister type and acknowledged that Yuta's friend had a point. However, she still preferred to be independent. Yuta asked if she didn't like the idea of depending on him or their father, but Saki explained that while she thought they were good people and she could rely on them, it would be easier if they were bad people. She apologized for her bluntness and thanked him for the food before leaving the table. Later, Yuta went back to his room and found a bag hanging on the doorknob, possibly something Saki left for him. The next day, they headed to school separately. At one point, Yuta noticed Saki walking ahead with her headphones on, oblivious to a car about to hit her. Yuta reacted immediately, preventing a tragedy. At the tennis club later, there was a noticeable distance between them. It was clear that Yuta had scolded her strongly after saving her, which affected Saki. Despite the uncomfortable experience, Yuta continued to worry about her. When it began to rain, he gave her his umbrella, resulting in him arriving home soaked. After showering and changing, he went to the living room, where he saw Saki with her friend Maya. On Thursday, June 11, Yuta recalls the events of the previous night. Maya, after meeting Saki, explained to Salas that she wanted to see Yuta's new house and apologized for not informing him earlier since she didn't have his phone number. She also told Maya that they were now siblings. Although Yuta clarifies that he isn't bothered by this, Say explains that Maya saw them talking at the tennis club and when Yuta gave her an umbrella. Yuta apologizes for not being more careful, as they were supposed to keep their sibling relationship a secret. Saki doesn't pay much attention to this and simply asks for Yuta's phone number. After reminiscing about the events, Yuta overhears a conversation between Saki and their mother from his room. They mention that Tai Chi will be home late, so they can all have breakfast together, something they haven't done in a while. Both Yuta and his father praise Akiko's cooking, particularly enjoying the tortilla with broth she made, which includes dashi broth. Akiko tells Yuta that Saki knows the recipe and could make it for him sometime, though Saki says she isn't as good at it. Yuta mentions he also likes fried eggs, so Saki agrees to cook those for him when she's in the mood. Once Tai Chi leaves for work, Yuta asks Akiko if he should add his clothes to the weekly laundry. She prefers to do the laundry herself, explaining that there are many delicate fabrics. Yuta insists on helping, but both Akiko and Saki point out that he doesn't know how to use the laundry net for delicate items. Realizing his inexperience, Yuta agrees to leave the task to them. Later, Akiko mentions she will be washing Taichi's underwear and asks Yuta if she can wash his as well. Yuta hesitates for a moment, finding it a personal matter. Soon after, Yuta prepares to leave with his umbrella. Before he goes, Saki asks him to wait for her as she wants to go with him. On the way, she apologizes, suggesting he might prefer feminine underwear and implying he might not know how to wash clothes, having always rejected traditional gender roles. Yuta asks Saki to calm down and makes it clear that he doesn't wear makeup or do anything like that. Saki comments that his eyebrows are perfect and envies him when she learns they are natural. Changing the subject, she asks if he finds it hard that there are only two categories to define gender, and he agrees. Saki admits that she hadn't considered it much before, but Yuta tells her not to worry as it doesn't bother him. He also remarks that sometimes people act on impulse due to societal conditioning and believes people say and do things instinctively. Saki responds that prejudices lead to discrimination, and Yuta agrees, emphasizing the importance of thoughtful actions and learning from mistakes. After a moment of silence, Saki says she understands perfectly. They head to class, and later, when Yuta returns home, he is caught looking at Saki's underwear. Nervous, he quickly excuses himself, saying he has to go to work. When he returns, Saki brings up the incident, acknowledging that his reaction made her think he might steal something, and Yuta admits he feared she'd think that. Saki apologizes for her assumption and offers him a cup of hot chocolate, saying they are even. She teases him, asking if her underwear was tempting enough to catch his attention. Embarrassed, Yuta denies it but then admits the thought crossed his mind. Saki agrees, apologizing and ending the conversation by informing him she finished dinner and a bath. The story moves to Friday, June 12. At the tennis court, Maya asks Yuta about Saki, mentioning she's been down since morning. Later, Yuta texts Saki to check if she's okay, and she replies affirmatively. That evening, they have dinner together, and Yuta mentions he still hasn't found a well-paying job. Although she isn't pressuring him, Saki feels like she'll end up cooking for him forever at this rate. Yuta reassures her, offering help if she needs it, and she silently accepts. After dinner, Saki takes a bath and freshens up in her room, while Yuta reads a book in his bed. Unbeknownst to him, Saki quietly enters his room, turns off the lights, and removes some of her clothes. She slowly approaches his bed and, in the darkness, touches his cheek, asking if he's willing to pay for her body. Shocked, Yuta experiences flashbacks of their past since moving in with Tai Chi. From Saki's perspective, on Sunday, June 7, she felt relieved when she met Yuta, realizing he wasn't a bad person. 
He even prepared a clean bath for her, which she appreciated. On Monday, June 8, Yuta spoke to her at school, showing more sensibility than she expected. She was annoyed by the rumors he believed about her but couldn't blame him, knowing what others thought. She felt understood by him for the first time. On Tuesday, June 9, she left a note saying Yuta liked fried eggs with soy sauce and started cooking for him as a way to repay his efforts to find a good job. She knew it wouldn't be easy but appreciated his efforts. On Wednesday, June 10, she felt embarrassed when Yuta asked about her English lessons, not wanting him to see how hard she tried. Maya's visit that day brought joy and laughter, a rare occurrence for her. They exchanged phone numbers, and she wasn't surprised Yuta used a landscape as his profile picture. On Thursday, June 11, Yuta told her that wanting to do something and actually doing it are different, a sentiment she shared. She realized how much she agreed with his thoughts, finding him dangerous because he understood her too well. This brings us to the present, where Yuta tells Saki that she's acting like the type of girl he despises. He feels she's exploiting a situation he never wanted to happen, and he doesn't understand the point if she can't contradict the negative stereotypes about women. After covering her with some clothes, Saki tries to explain her reasons, but Yuta interrupts, saying that what's important isn't him, but her. Hearing this makes Saki lower her gaze, and she confesses her feelings. She reveals that she thought her father was a good person, but when his business failed, he became distrustful. Her mother had to work doubly hard to support them, but this only made him more bitter, accusing her of being nothing more than a sex worker who attracted clients with her charms. While Saki understands he was going through a tough time, it doesn't excuse his behavior towards her mother. Reflecting on this, Yuta agrees and shares that they experienced something similar when their mother cheated on their father, causing them to distrust women for a while. Saki is surprised to hear this, especially since Tai Chi, who is usually cheerful, is involved. She realizes he might also distrust women. Yuta agrees silently, and Saki notes that they share a lot in common, even the broken parts. Yuta concurs, but believes that despite being a bit broken, they can do well as brother and sister. Saki remains quiet, still feeling down about her recent actions. Trying to cheer her up, Yuta suggests she can call him big brother if she wants, which makes her laugh and feel better. She stands up, thanks him, and asks to make things work, but calls him Saki as usual, ignoring his suggestion. On Saturday, June 13, Yuta and Saki have dinner alone, having convinced their parents to go out for the day. This was Yuta's idea, showing his thoughtfulness, and Saki thinks he shouldn't be called big brother for this reason. They spend the day together, and Saki can't stop watching him. During another family breakfast, they bond over food again. Saki thinks that calling him big brother would make her too dependent on him, so she apologizes and sticks with Saki. When she calls him this, she feels something indescribable, different from calling him brother. She's never felt this way before and starts realizing she has feelings for him, admitting her mind is in turmoil. Lately, she's had trouble sleeping, even though she wants to be independent. She feels confused about these new emotions, despite their agreement to be just siblings. 